All right. So just <clears throat> in this one, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, fallen teachers and fallen gurus. Um, and what do I mean by fallen teacher or fallen guru? Well, I guess I'm just talking about the stereotype uh, of um, people who seem to have a lot of followers, seem to be worshipped a lot, uh, seem to have a, a, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of publicity, uh, whatever that means. Um, and have this status as being spiritual authorities. Um, and I want to talk, and someone was asking me about, you know, and they were, the, the, I think it was last week, and they were asking me, they were quite distressed because one of their teachers that they liked, uh, suddenly there's lots of reports of, um, of uh, lots of things seem to, to, to be going wrong in that environment, and lots of reports of, uh, of negative things happening in the environment and lots of reports going around and stuff like that. So they, they followed this person and now they're quite distressed, you know, and they were speaking to me. And, um, and so, um, uh, and it was, I, you know, I felt for that person. I mean, how, and uh, also, I think the great thing with me is that I, one of my main teachers is Dr. David R. Hawkins. And he, um, and I've been following him for like uh, 18 years, and he goes into enormous depth into um, how um, people fall from grace. Mm. Now, in the, in the 12 steps, this is quite common. You know, uh, we, we talk about the defects of character, and if you're an alcoholic, or if you're a drug addict, or if you're a food addict, it, you know, it's expected that people may relapse. Even people who have got very good spiritual recovery can one day relapse. Whereas, you know, you, so you have that grounding, but when it comes to these spiritual things, and they can have a lot of magical projection, they can have hundreds of thousands of people following them. So they can have this thing. So now here's the thing, and I'll, I'll give you, and it's um, how can, well, I'll, I'm going to sort of ramble off in the future. How can you tell if someone that you're following has fallen? Um, for a naive spiritual seeker, it's difficult. You know, for a new spiritual seeker, it's very, very difficult to tell uh, if um, a spiritual teacher is not good at, from the start or is, is, is good in the start or has fallen. But actually, what I learned with Hawkins' uh, work, because uh, he's able to calibrate teachers, you know, with muscle testing, you can check the vibration, how high they are. Um, and so he, he, he can track them. And so, uh, and his research was very revealing. So what tends to happen, this tends to be a theme uh, uh, of what really happens, is when people do a lot of spiritual work, their consciousness tends to elevate. Uh, and at a certain level, uh, they get to, um, uh, he, he would say, a level about 570, a level of consciousness. What is that? You know, there's a level of unconditional love, then there's a the level higher than unconditional love, which is like, um, you know, if you're going to states of bliss, states of ecstasy. And in, actually in India, there is a, a period, just below the stage of enlightenment in India, they talk about the cities. Now the cities um, are, when you do enough spiritual work at dissolving the nature of the ego, at a certain point, you get all kinds of phenomena start to happen around, uh, seemingly happen around spiritual teachers. You know, and they, they, it's like the, the laws of separation start to break down. You know, the teacher can be at two places at the same time. You can have someone come in with cancer and then they suddenly have their cancer suddenly uh, dissolve. Uh, you know, one day it's there, they meet the teacher and the cancer is gone the next day. Uh, people have these amazing spiritual experiences. You know, they're coming in, they're depressed or what, uh, what not, and then suddenly they're in a state of bliss after meeting the teacher. So that tends to happen at a certain, as the spiritual teacher does a certain, as they reach a certain level, what tends to happen, and this is not by all means the whole story, but this is a common thing that happens. When they reach that level of consciousness, suddenly they're following mushrooms, you know, and there's reports of miracles and all kinds of amazing things start to happen around them. And now they're sort of worshipped as these things, you know, oh, you know, when I saw Master Baba, you know, my cancer disappeared, and uh, when I saw Master 
of um, my depression for 50 years just suddenly went away. And then suddenly, like, they have hundreds and thousands of people and uh, uh, all kinds of things happen. Uh, now, at that level as well, uh, all the way up, actually, with spiritual work, one is tested. You know, tempt you know in, in Christianity, they would call it temptations, the classic temptations. In, in the 12 steps, they call it the defects of character. Um, but it's just the usual stuff. So there is uh, power, fame, uh, adulation, uh, control of others, um, sexual seduction. All of those things uh, become tempting, you know. And um, also, uh, so also at certain points, you know, at each level up, you get different tests. You know, you get different tests uh, to the ego. So even at those levels of the cities, you still have an ego, and you can still um, you can still fall. Actually, at that level, is it seems to be there is. Um, so this is what I'm sort of saying. At that level, anyway, when they reach a certain level, when the cities start to happen, they usually become famous, what's, what I'd call projected within the collective consciousness, guru status, mm. you know. And, you know, people will just fly around the world to, to meet them. Uh, they'll have hundreds of people. People will be re reporting miracles. People will be worship, worshipping them. They'll have a huge following. Um, at that level, uh, what tends to happen is there is a lot of, um, and Hawkins talks about it, as you go up, one becomes a threat to the collective ego. You see, the collective ego. So we're going to go into a bit more of es esoteric stuff. As you go up, you're tested, actually this is all the way up. When, as, you, as you spiritually evolve, you're tested from within your own ego, and you're tested from the egos of other people around you, and you're also tested from psychic psychic stuff as well. So now the, the higher you go, um, the more testing you get because you become a threat to the dominion of falsity in this world. So when you start teaching truth at higher and higher levels, your own ego tests you from within. Also, um, people test you from without on your ego status. And also you can get things like psychic attack, demonic attack, uh, all kinds of other things. So we're going to go in, anyway, we're going to have a, a bit of a chat on this one. So 570 is the first mate, sorry, uh, the level of the cities, the, the high, you know, when the gurus become famous, there is a lot of testing. So usually what happens is they've got a, a loyal following up until that time, and actually a lot of good stuff and the teachings are very, very pure up until that point. But usually at that point, uh, it's like from within the, you know, so we say, when I say the collective, the ego from within the teacher and the egos from those who are from without. And also there's testing from, uh, there can be testing with psychic attacks, demonic attacks as well, uh, are all levied. And as you get higher, these attacks become more ferocious. And they're like, as, you, as you're evolving spiritually, it's like you're clearing out, you know, if you're familiar with the chakra system, you're clearing out different aspects of the chakras as you're going up and as the Kundalini is rising up. And, but you always have bits of your chakras which are not yet cleared up because you're not enlightened yet. So it's like from within, from without, from psychic energies, um, it's like if there is a weak link within the teacher, then that becomes ferociously attacked, you know. So, you know, oh, you like, you like, the, you like the adulation of all the people like, bowing at your feet or, you, or um, you like being able to tell everybody how they should behave and what they should do or you know all, what about all those young pretty girls you know in, in the group so you know if it, wherever there's a weak link in the, uh, the evolution of the teacher because at, at that level when the, the miracles start happening the cities start happening they're still not fully mature they still ha will have weaknesses there might be for sexual seduction it might be for power, it might be for adulation, it might be for control. So where the, the chakras are slightly out of balance, there's a lot of testing. If at a certain point at that level, once they've got the mage, what I've called the guru following, uh, if they fall, suddenly uh, what tends to happen is um, uh, there's a change in the atmosphere. Uh, but people now respect them and have had a lot of experience of them being really good and lots of good things happening and their teachings being true. But uh, 
Okay, so when they fall, if now um, then uh, if you're if you're not spiritually evolved, uh, you'll trust them implicitly, even if they start to say different things, uh, because you now trust them. You see, and you've projected mm -hmm. you've projected that they're your teacher. So uh, so they so they've fallen. Uh, and usually the atmosphere, I mean, quite often what see, seems to happen with a lot of the major teachers that have fallen is that there starts to be a lot of reports that start to come out that, uh, you know, stuff's happening. You know, there's lots and lots of reports and rumours and, and they have a big following and people get disillusioned. Like, they, oh, these people must be all be telling lies, you know. There seems to be, oh, you know, like uh, sexual seduction or money or power or whatever it is, or the atmosphere becomes controlling. Uh, I'm not going to mention names because I'm on video. Or, you know, it may be like, well, um, let's all, ha you know, sex is holy, so let's all have orgies. You mm -hmm. know, so, uh, uh, you know, um, sex is holy. Uh, let, you know, God, you know, so everyone. Like yeah, you know, let's have a let's have an and let's have an orgy, and that's what God would want us to do, mm. you know. And but these people now trust that teacher, but there there has been a change in the early teachings that wasn't happening, but suddenly these mechanisms come in which are based on control, and you know it may be for the teacher to have more sex with the followers or more money, or 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 whatever or you know, let's build an ashram. And uh, now, now that you're all here and uh, you know I'm telling the truth, we're going to build a big ashram and uh, everyone should don donate money, you know, for the, for, the, for the holy cause. And sex is holy, so orgies are good as well. So, so, it's like, so it's like, well, this has been our teacher and everything's been good up until now. So yes, I'm going to, I'm going to sell the house. We don't need a house. Give the money, donate the money to the ashram and... And you know, you know, everything I need is with the teacher. So these kind of things start to happen, and there's a lot of these. So, and I was asked this question, like, well, how can you tell? You know, and it was a great question, and I felt I felt for it, and I thought I should do a video on it. Uh, for a naive spiritual seeker, um, on a certain level, I could say you can't tell. You can't tell. I mean, it's like okay, so three people have said like horrible stuff has happened. But you're going to think, if you're a naive spiritual seeker, that maybe they're wrong. Maybe those three people are all uh, not telling the truth. They're just probably nutcases or whatever. And I guess that might be true. Uh, uh, so you can't tell if you're a naive spiritual seeker. If you're a sophisticated uh, spiritual person, you might have intuition that something is not right now. Intuitively. I mean, if you've gone to 12 steps for long, long enough, you should have enough intuition. You know, like if it's like, let's have sex orgies and like sell, sell your properties and, and donate the money to, to the holy cause, you probably think like, this doesn't feel quite right, you know. So for a naive spiritual seeker, it's going to be difficult. Uh, for a sophisticated <coughs> spiritual seeker, you'll have intuition. I mean, ultimately, and I think this is, may or may not be helpful, muscle testing of kinesiology which really Hawkins put up, uh, that's like checking your muscles to see if your muscles are now going weak. Or finding somebody who can do it and checking if that, if that teacher is in integrity uh, or is still in integrity uh, is, uh, is a good way. So, um, I, now, I was out, and also um, I would say, now, that's the first level. Now, even if you're enlightened, you, you can be tested. So here's, I mean, so this video is a bit like bad news, isn't it, really? It's really, really good, isn't it? So, so you can, uh, can like, this way. so even once, even once you get past that stage of the cities and you get the hundreds of people following you and stuff like that and worshipping, and you still don't fall from grace, uh, and you become enlightened, um, there is... So what does enlightenment mean? It means you no longer experience yourself as being sep in separation. But you still have consciousness. You still have consciousness. Even though the consciousness is no longer limited in nature and experiences separation. However, here's, here's the, the, the funny thing, is that still consciousness evolves at the levels of enlightenment. But the, 
the testing is subtle, you know, so you get subtle testing, like, is consciousness um, allness or nothingness? Uh, and also there's experience of being beyond karma. So, now, hence the thing of, uh, now, like, Hook, I'll, I'll give you some examples. So we talked about the first level when the gurus fall, is when the cities happen at a very advanced level. So a lot of the teachers fall then. Then a lot of reports come out and there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, um, uh, distress amongst the spiritual seekers. But also the enlightened teachers fall as well. So now, um, now Hawkins talked about Muhammad and Muhammad went up to 700. Uh, sorry, Muhammad went into the levels of enlightenment. Um, and he fell because he had a karmic weakness uh, called temporal lobe epilepsy. So there you are, you're an enlightened consciousness, not feeling separation. But suddenly that epileptic fit happened. And, it, and um, probably what happened was a demonic entity got, got in. And so an enlightened teacher can, can fall, you know. So uh, that's one example that Hawkins talked about. Also, now, here's, I mean, here's the bad news. I mean, like um, Buddha and Christ were, were, you know, they had transcended the ego. And yet they were both tested, you know, both tested. So, so what's talked about in the Bible, as Hawkins says, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, was probably, you know, uh, where he sweat tears. That was probably his, uh, that was probably, uh, I think that was a level of enlightenment. But anyway, then he went into the desert and then that thing that's talked about in the Bible, which is, um, it was like Lucifer offered him dominion power over the world. Yeah, Lucifer offered him, I'm not sure if I get, I'm not a Bi I don't claim to be a Bible expert or anything, something like that. Anyway, so that wasn't actually a verbal thing. That's like more at a subtle level of an invitation from, uh, from a Luciferic entity to claim the power of enlightenment in the world, as, a, as opposed to decline that invitation, which is a very subtle thing. And uh, Buddha talked about, you know, um, being attacked by demons, you know, a constant demonic attack. So, and, and these are very advanced, very advanced teachers who didn't fall. So, Sorry for th if that was a bit depressing, but uh, now, um, uh, so actually it's not all bell uh, rose. So how do you tell if a spiritual seeker's fallen? Well, one is, um, and what are the safeguards? You know, what are the safeguards? And Hawkins talked about, like in Muhammad's case, the safeguards is the best safeguard for a teacher not to fall is to have a teacher mentoring that teacher who's higher than the teacher. Yeah, so if you have a teacher who's higher than you, then that is, a, that is probably the best insurance policy because they, they pull, you up, pull you up to track if you're going off thin. Now, uh, for myself, I mean, you know, it was asked to me, and uh, for myself, I mean, what do I have? Well, I have, I ha I have, a, um, I have a co sponsor in a 12 step fellowship. I have an, uh, I also have a, another person who's kind of like a co-sponsor, another fellowship, who I who I speak to just for uh, discussing spiritual inventory with on a regular basis, and I have another person as well, who's not in a twelve-step fellowship, but it's like can, is able to give me spiritual guidance or form. So, um, I, so I have those three things for myself that I'm not alone. I think if you're a spiritual teacher on your own with no one to talk to. Um, you know, and you're ferociously being attacked by temptation all the time. If you fall and you're not picked up on it, picked up on it, and given corrective measures for it straight away, then you know it can take you, take you out. So um, now I was asked a question about why do teachers who gurus fall very strongly? Yeah. Uh, Actually, I, I would say something different. You see, uh, I think, you know, te you know, like say a teacher is uh, calibrating very high and, um, and they make a very subtle error, I think they can fall slightly. But I think certain, certain errors will create a dramatic fall from grace. Um, 
you know, I think if a teacher's got hundreds of people and they're slightly controlling, they might not go all the way down. But uh, when you make certain spiritual errors, uh, and uh, uh, like sexual seduction and or, or manipulating the whole place for money, uh, uh, then the fall is going to be very, very big. Because unfortunately, if you're a spiritual teacher, uh, karmically, uh, the karma is a lot higher when you're that high. Because uh, you have the spiritual souls of so many people that, mm. that sort of place their faith in you. So, <clears throat> I think, so if you make a dramatic error and then you carry on in that dramatic error, the fall is, is very, very sharp. 